infection control. Healthcare workers are at risk of coming into contact with germs that can cause disease by spreading from person to person. There are several practices used by healthcare professionals to stop this spread. In telecare standard and transmission-based isolation precaution policies are based upon the latest recommendations from the CDC. Standard precautions. Standard precautions are used to prevent the spread of bloodborne germs. They're used when providing care to all individuals, whether or not they appear infectious or symptomatic. Standard precautions include wearing gloves and other personal protective equipment are necessary when in contact with potentially infectious materials, using sharps disposal units, never recapping needles. Hand washing is the number one way to prevent the spread of infections. Transmission-based precautions and isolation categories. Transmission-based precautions are used in addition to standard precautions when caring for patients who have or may have a contagious disease. Within this group, there are three types of isolation categories including 1. Airborne isolation is used when a patient is infected with a disease caused by small airborne droplets such as TB. These patients are typically held in a specialized negative air pressurized room and staff are required to use a respirator. 2. Droplet isolation is used when a patient has a known or suspected infection with germs that are transmitted by larger droplets such as meningitis, pertussis, influenza, and mumps. A mask is required if working within three feet of these patients. 3. Contact isolation is used when a patient has an infection or is colonized with germs that can be transmitted from direct contact with the patient or their environment. Examples include VRE, MRSA, C. difficile, RSV, hepatitis A, scabies, or lice. Wear gloves and gown for each entry into the room. Personal Protective Equipment PPE. PPE is specialized clothing or equipment such as gloves, gowns, masks, eye protection that are worn by an employee for protection against an infectious hazard. Key points regarding PPE include employees should wear gloves when coming in contact with potentially infectious materials. Masks should be worn whenever splashing, spraying, or splattering droplets of blood or other potential infectious materials occurs. Disposable contaminated items must be disposed in a proper biohazard waste bin. Bloodborne Pathogen BBP Exposure Control Plan The purpose of the Bloodborne Pathogen Exposure Control Plan is to reduce or eliminate occupational exposures to IntelliPros. The risk of this exposure is reduced or eliminated by using standard precautions, engineering controls such as sharps units, needless systems, and self-sheathing needles, personal protective equipment, cleaning all work surfaces after contamination or potential contamination using an appropriate disinfectant, minimize splashing, spraying, splattering, and generation of droplets of blood or potential infectious material when performing procedures. Place all specimens of blood or other potentially infectious material in a properly labeled container. Discard all contaminated sharps immediately in containers that are closable, puncture resistant, leak proof, and appropriately labeled. Do not eat, drink, or apply cosmetics, lip balm, or handle contact lenses in areas where there is a likelihood of BBP exposure. Blood and body fluid exposures. Blood and body fluid exposure is defined as an injury with a contaminated sharp object such as a need stick or spills or splashes of blood or other potentially infectious material onto a mucous membranes or non-intact skin that result from the performance of an employee's duties. The two important components to prevent infections following a blood and body fluid exposure are 1. Hepatitis B immunization and 2. Post-exposure management. If you have a blood and body fluid exposure, the most important steps include immediately and thoroughly wash the contaminated area or flush mucous membranes with water. Notify your on-site supervisor at your current healthcare facility. Fill out an employee incident report at the healthcare facility you are staffing. Contact IntelliCare to help find an occupation or urgent care clinic nearest to your current location.